Welcome to Cause and United Reform Church here in Bourne End, Buckinghamshire. Through our online connections, we come together to offer worship today. Members of Trinity Church in High Wycombe and Cause End Church here 
in Bourne End and further afield as well. Wherever you are, whatever your background or your beliefs, you are most welcome to worship today on this Palm Sunday. This is the beginning of what Christians call Holy Week, the week that leads on to the pain and mystery of Good Friday and the wonder and joy of Easter Sunday. As usual, we begin our worship by lighting our peace candle and praying silently for peace in the world and peace in our hearts. So let's keep a moment of quiet as the candle is lit. Jesus said, Peace I give to you, such peace as the world cannot give. And so here today we welcome Christ who comes to bring justice and peace, freedom and forgiveness. Let us make way for our King, the King of Kings, the Prince of Peace, the Lord of all. And so we sing, make way, make way for Christ the King. Let us pray. Lord of all, we make way for your coming today in Jesus Christ. We fling wide the gates of our hearts to make space for his presence and his peace. Lord of all, you have come among us in Jesus Christ, the donkey riding King of Love, the rejected Prince of Peace, the wounded healer and the dying Saviour, the giver of life, new life, abundant and eternal. In the stillness of this moment, we offer our worship, our thanks and our praise. Lift our hearts, Lord of all, beyond the anxiety of these times, the limitations of our minds, the self-centeredness of our hearts. 
take from us that which holds us back from truly loving you and truly loving our neighbour as ourselves. So stir up your spirit of grace and truth within us today. Separated as we are, gather us, Lord of all, by your gracious Spirit. Unite us, the one of all time and space, with your Church, past and present and to come, as we join together in the prayer that Jesus gave us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So today is Palm Sunday and last Sunday I gave you a challenge to make a cross or to find your old palm cross and somehow make it new. Well I did find a palm cross or two in the manse and I brought it here and maybe you found a few too. I also made one from a palm in a pot in our garden. It's very spiky and it reminds me of those thorns, of the crown of thorns that Jesus wore. Well, Jacob was busy with his mum Ali and made a cross and wrote the words new life on it. So well done Jacob. Rosie found her old palm cross and made a whole display in her front window to cheer up passers-by. And the Sparks family have been busy too and we watch them now. cross I invite you to hold it now and if you didn't then simply use your fingers to make a cross and I'll offer this prayer. Eternal God we hold the cross and remember Jesus who gave his life for all and is with us now and always. Unite us in his strong love, love for the world. Amen. During Lent we've been exploring the way that Jesus used psalms and his followers used psalms to speak of him. 
And today we focus on one of the psalms that was especially dear to the early Christians, Psalm 118. Our Gospel reading tells the story of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem and the crowd's excitement at his arrival. Their songs of praise on that day include quotations from Psalm 118, one of the psalms that would have been used in the Passover celebrations that were about to begin. So before we read that psalm, we hear the story of Palm Sunday from Matthew's Gospel, and Harry Bates, one of the elders at Trinity Church, is to read this. Our first reading this morning is taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 1 to 11, and I'm reading from the New International Version. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. And untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, see your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. May God bless to us this reading from his holy word, and to his name be the praise. Amen. And as we reflect on that reading, we sing, You are the King of glory, you are the Prince of Peace. Jeff Britt, an elder at Cause End, and his daughter Karen. Reading Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2 and 19 to the end. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let Israel say, his love endures forever. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord, through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. 
You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. So let us pray. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the one who comes in peace. Blessed is the one who is our cornerstone, light in our darkness, hope for our world, Jesus Christ. Amen. So how has the week been for you? Have you managed to connect to people through phone or computer, through words spoken at a safe distance when you've shopped or when you've gone for a little exercise or someone has called by? Have you connected through your own thoughts and memories, perhaps even through praying or keeping silence? Have you connected with other people this last week? Or have you felt often alone and isolated? Well, I hope that worship today will help you to sense your part in a bigger family, to sense that connection. The big family of the church and the even bigger family of the human race. We are all in this together. Young and old, rich and poor, healthy and unwell, those of faith and no faith, from west and east, from north and south. We are all in this together. We are part of this crowd of humanity on this precious small planet. We may have to self-isolate or social distance from others, but we can't turn our backs on each other, on our brothers and sisters around us, and across the world. In a sense, coronavirus has shown what and who are most important in our lives. It's not celebrity status or wealth or power that matters in these times. It's ordinary humanity caring for each other, helping each other, serving each other, using the gifts that they've been given for the wider good. Today we remember a crowd of humanity jostling for places, climbing trees and cutting branches, rubbing up against each other as they try to catch a glimpse of a man riding on a donkey, the prophet from Nazareth. There's excitement in the air as pilgrims arrive in the great city of Jerusalem ready for the national celebrations of the Passover. The city is crowded and noisy, and there's an air of excitement. Excitement over who this Jesus is and what he might be about at this critical moment in the nation's history. And alongside the excitement is tension too. The tension of the religious leaders worried about what the crowd might do and what this Galilean preacher might say. And there's tension in the ranks of the Roman soldiers patrolling the city, nervous of potential riots or rebellions in this occupied territory. In deference to the holiness of the city, the pilgrims walk, ready to be overawed by the great holy temple where their ancestors have gathered and worshipped and offered sacrifices for generation upon generation. But the city itself is un, 
certain whether to welcome these pilgrims who have come from far and near, who bring with them challenges and new teaching, and a would-be prophet who is questioning much of what they hold dear. In the midst of that crowd comes Jesus riding on a donkey, ready to be acclaimed as King, as Son of David, as the one who comes in the name of God and comes to reclaim the city for her Lord. His acted out parable on that donkey is both full of humility and full of bravado. This is no war horse, no triumphal entry on a chariot. It is on the much abused, overworked donkey that he chooses as his steed. It's the ordinary people's beast of burden. It would be like our Queen arriving at the Houses of Parliament in a reliant robin. There's an image of a different kind of king here. One coming in peace, not war, in gentleness and compassion, not violent power, in humility, not arrogant pride. But it's still the image of a king. There is bravado here, a very public challenge to the powers that be, the powers of the temple and the powers of Rome. Rather than humbly walking into the city, here is Jesus riding through its gates. Everyone recognises the sign. The words of the prophet Zechariah come immediately into their minds, and the great psalm soon follows, as the crowds shout out, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. One of the great Passover psalms became linked forever in Christian minds with that day and with that King, Jesus of Nazareth. The psalms include words that have become a rallying cry for Christians from that day onwards. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvellous in our eyes. The love that Jesus offered on that day was rejected. The word of hope that he gave was silenced on a Roman cross. And yet it could never be silenced. His giving of his life became life-giving for others, a cornerstone on which a new temple was built, a new humanity created, one that could reflect that love that he lived and lived out on the cross and beyond. The psalm that the crowd used on that day ends with an affirmation that we can hold on to through all that life throws to on us today and in the days ahead. Give thanks to the Lord, for God is good, God's love endures forever. Hold on to the goodness of God and try to reflect that goodness to others. Hold on to that love that endures forever. The love of God that we see in Jesus will never fail. A reflection from Christian aid that came to me this week puts it like this. Love never fails. Even in the dark, darkest moments, love gives hope. Love compels us to fight against coronavirus alongside our sisters and brothers living in poverty. Love compels us to stand together in prayer with our neighbours near and far. Love compels us to pray and give and act as one. Now it is clear that our futures are bound together more tightly than ever before. Let us love and know that love 
the love of Christ that never fails. Amen. And so we sing that great hymn, My song is love unknown, my Saviour's love for me. prayers for the world and for each other. Let us pray. And I invite you after my words, God who is good, to join me in saying, your love endures forever. God who is good, your love endures forever. We know this because of Jesus, the one who lived the life of compassion, gave his life on the cross for friend and enemy alike and promises to be with us always through the joys and the heartaches of life. So we rejoice that God who is good, your love endures forever. We remember how Jesus saw the crowd and his heart was filled with compassion. And so we pray, loving God, for the ordinary people of the world, crowded into towns and cities, but learning the new language of self-isolating and social distancing. We pray for those involved in providing our food and essential services. And especially we pray for those in the medical and care services, those who are cleaners and researchers, giving of themselves for the well-being of others. Wherever they serve, may they know the support of their people and of their governments, not only in words or prayers, but in practical action. May they be protected in their work for the good of others. And so, loving God, we thank you for every action of compassion we see today, a reflection of your love 
for the world. So we can affirm, God who is good, your love endures forever. We remember how Jesus wept at the graveside of Lazarus, moved with pity for Mary and Martha in their grief. And so, loving God, we pray today for all who grieve the death of loved ones, especially where that grieving has been disrupted and disturbed by the restrictions on gathering and sharing and embracing. We pray for those whose sense of grief and loss has been rekindled through memory or loneliness. And we ask your comfort and peace for them. In the hardness of separation, may they know that God who is good, your love endures forever. We remember that Jesus wept when he approached Jerusalem as he sensed the rejection of what would bring peace. We pray for peace among the nations, God of justice, a working together rather than futile isolationism or strident nationalism. We pray for the forgotten places where conflict, violence and war continue to reap their harvest, where poverty and injustice take their grim toll. Loving God, use our prayers for the work of your kingdom, for your justice and peace. God, who is good, your love endures forever. And we remember how Jesus in the garden prayed, not my will, but yours be done. So in the stillness we pray for those on our hearts this day, for family and friends near and far, for young and old, for our community, our neighbours near and far, and for our world. For them all we say, God who is good, your love endures forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we've entered Holy Week and I invite you to share this week, to pray through this week step by step. On Good Friday we're going to have a short service at half past ten joined by friends from Union Baptist in Wickham and from Wesley Church there in the centre of High Wickham. Do join us for that and for Easter Sunday worship as we celebrate Christ risen again at half past ten. And if you are able, if you are in this area of Cause End, then do bring a flower on the Saturday Easter Eve to add to our Easter cross. So I wish you well in this week as we walk with Jesus the way of the cross and beyond. And we close by singing the great Palm Sunday hymn, Ride on, ride on in majesty.
So let us journey into Holy Week to know the peace of a man riding on a donkey, to discover the love revealed on a cross, and to grasp that living hope that Jesus gives us. Let us journey into Holy Week, blessed by our God, and a blessing to our neighbours, step by step, day by day. <laughs>